Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, esteemed guests, welcome to this conversation, part of Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, eliminating hunger, scaling solutions for global impact. Great conversation to be had here. Let's welcome Her Excellency uh, Mariam al uh, She is Minister of State for Food and Water Security here in the UAE. And Dr. Agnes Kalibata, Special Envoy for the UN Secretary General for the 2021 Food Systems, Food Systems Summit. Ladies, welcome to the conversation. Excellency, may I bring to you first of all, we import about 90% of what we need on a daily basis in this country. So if there's any ministerial role that got very little sleep over the past year, it's probably yours. Can you just contextualize for our audience how much you've learned, how much you've had to adapt in the past 12 months? Excellency, good morning. Good morning, Manus. Good morning, Dr. Agnes, and good morning to all our viewers uh, from the UAE. A warm welcome. Um, I wish you all a good start to 2021 and uh, please stay safe and uh, take care of yourselves. So, Manus, to your question. Yes, a year filled with lessons learned, uh, opportunities. First of all, as you mentioned, the UAE imports 90% of its food. So, as you can imagine, when the lockdowns happened, there was a huge effect on the global food supply chains. Um, and uh, suddenly there were certain food items that were not coming in uh, through our entry points. Um, we also saw a, a big push um, of local production uh, increasing as well, which was a huge benefit as well. Um, the lessons learned were huge in that people's, uh, let's say, views on food security suddenly changed because maybe they didn't understand what my role was before, but going through this crisis, they much more understood what food security is about and why countries should focus on it. And we were already working on transitioning to more uh, sustainable food systems, but with this crisis, it kind of accelerated much more why we should do it. People started to, because of the lockdowns, eating at home more, uh, reducing food loss and food waste. Uh, mm -hmm. People started to change uh, what foods they were choosing, so choosing locally. These were some of the positive effects. We as a nation started to look into how we could adopt technology to grow more food in the UAE sustainably. Um, and of course, uh, the partnerships, uh, the UAE forged or has this in, in its uh, foreign policy. And this really came as a success key factor to maneuver through the challenges that we were facing uh, on a regular basis. Restrictions from many different countries, but because of good relations we had, opportunities we had, we could bring in and we did not face any times of any critical food items not being at any of the shelves at the supermarket. So this was a huge uh, um, uh, success that we went through. It's amazing that you said suddenly everybody around the ministerial table, sort of all, all eyes were on you, something uh, that food security very much we often take for, for granted, don't we, when we go to the store. Dr. Agnes, may I bring it to you? There is Her Excellency talking about, you know, what evolved in the space of 12 months. I could start by asking you, out of COVID, the tragedy that we're living with, there are many setbacks, but given what Her Excellency has just said, has this provoked stronger thought, better debate, and a much more uh, focusing of minds on food security? Thank you for the question, Manas, and it's good to be with Your Excellency on this discussion. And thank you for shining a spotlight on hunger, food security issues, but also the food system summit that is coming in this Abdabi week. So thank you so much. So to go back to the point of manners, it really clear, three things have happened that I want to go back to. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID, but also even before COVID, <clears throat> hunger was increasing for five years in a row. COVID is part of the problem. Uh, COVID happened as a result of some of the challenges we're seeing around climate change, around encroachment and all that. So even before COVID, there was consensus that we need to do things, things differently. But now, what is very clear, what, what really gives all of us hope is the, the single-minded focus of the world on the fact that we must come up with a solution in post-COVID, a solution that really recognizes that 
We have the Food Systems Summit as one of the areas we could discuss and agree on the type of ambitions we need to come up with, to come through on the 2030 agenda. But we have a number of other summits, the Nutrition for Growth Summit, the COP26 Summit, the Biodiversity Summit, all of which recognize that we really need to do things differently. And for me, I hope to want to just be a super year of summits that will be a super year of multilateralism, all of us coming through on the, for the weakest among us. The second one is innovation. There's so much that is happening in the innovation space. I mean, just give a woman a smartphone and see how her life changes. So I'm, I'm hoping that through the action tracks that we have in, in the summit, that actually we are going to discuss a lot and see the opportunities for innovation and that we will pick game changers that can change our world. The last one, uh, given time, pushing through this, the last one is really the, the emphasis that is being put by all of us on green recovery, emphasizing that we need to, to reverse our impact on climate, emphasizing that we, may, we need to make advances on nature, and emphasizing that our investments need to be cognizant of the fact that we need to do better for people and planet. So those are the three things that really give me great hope. Let's just pick off some of those, Dr. Agnes, and take it back to, to Her Excellency. If we talk about innovation, I mean, oftentimes, um, when I look around the kingdom here, Your Excellency, it is about innovation and it is about grabbing tech. And I want to get a sense from you in your world, in your domain of, of food tech or agri-tech, the innovation, how has that been scaled up? What's been the most innovative change, let's say, in the past 12 months? How have you scaled it up and is that shareable? Do you think there are, we often talk about shareable outcomes, which are yes. a benefit to the world. What, what can you tell me about what you've done at the ministry in the past 12 months that is scalable okay. and shareable? Okay, so uh, man is the first thing, even before the crisis hit, is we had a plan. So it's really important you have the political will, you have a plan where it is you're going. We were already wanting to increase ag tech in the UAE, so agriculture technology, but through this crisis, the need really got accelerated. People were demanding more local food, clean foods. Uh, people are looking at the aspect of sustainability much more than they were before. So this really has pushed us uh, in the last 12 months, we have issued a national sustainable agriculture label, which is um, in a way to help consumers say, this product has been grown sustainably, so it's actually in a way more than organic. It's looking also at water aspects, uh, human rights, animal welfare. Uh, we also uh, uh, put together a team, so like the cabinet approved a team uh, called the Ag Tech Development Team. So this team was uh, consisted of private and government stakeholders to put together a number of interventions that the government should look into to uh, promote ag tech in the UAE. How can we get more ag tech, sustainable agriculture? How can we use things like seawater to grow food? How can we ensure that we have the right seeds to grow food in such harsh environments like the UAE? And doing all this, we've really seen so many um, uh, companies establish themselves. We're now growing salmon, uh, blueberry, uh, quinoa. <clears throat> These are all things that were not or could not be grown before, but now they are commercially viable because of technologies, etc. So uh, it's so great to see these establishments come up. We also uh, launched a food tech challenge, a global food tech challenge, which we did in September 2019. We awarded the winners this year, coming up with great innovations on how to grow food or how to help in the food supply chain using technology when you are in hot arable uh, um, or hot, hot arid countries like the UAE. And, and we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment because I think that innovation, it, it is about what is scalable. Um, because I forgot to say who I am. I'm Manus Penny and I work at Bloomberg. Um, it's good when I remember who I am. But with that in mind, Dr. Agnes, let me bring it back to you slightly more from a Bloomberg slant. Um, Her Excellency talks about the innovation uh, and trying to prompt competition. How important is it that more capital comes to bear to help the innovation, to help the scalability, and deliver the solutions, Dr. Agnes? So um, there's no other time in the world than now for all of us to come together, for capital to be available. Because one of the things we've learned is a lot of countries are suffering from inability to access resources. 
a lot of businesses have definitely uh, 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 had because of the impact of COVID, have suffered from the ability to to access it. But more importantly, we are going to put new ideas on the table. We are able to scale them in a way that can impact our lives. We are going to have to fund those innovations. So one of the things we are doing within the food system summit, we actually have a financing track that we're thinking through all the ideas that we are we are pulling together through action tracks all the way from zero hunger to nutrition to reducing waste to reducing uh, carbon emissions and improving livelihoods and, and building resilience all these ideas are going to have to be funded so there's going to be a need for new capital because we see the new things that have happened around food security we have new food to our people, we are going to have to deal with that, that problem. We have new poor people, about 7 million, 70 million new poor people, 130 million new food sector people. We can't do any of these things for people. So we are going to have to come up with innovations that are going to have to take us to new ways of doing, doing business, but we are going to have to need resources to be able to deal with those challenges that have. What have been the biggest breakthroughs, Dr. Agnes? What, is, what have been the the biggest breakthroughs, I would suppose the phrase, we, we were chatting about this before we all got together, systemic uh, solutions, perhaps that we've seen in the past 12 months, Dr. Dennis. Um, I, I would say, so, I mean, for me, you asked me the biggest breakthrough, just recognizing that we all need come around the table and agree that we need to find solutions to these problems and put resources on the table. But there are some very cool ideas around um, how we, we need to eat differently, around new sources of food, around new ways of producing food. All these are, are, are great ideas that if put on the table. We do have, by the way, in the Food System Summit, we do have a scientific group that whose, whose job is to validate uh, whatever options we take forward. So here I'm hesitant to pull out one specific idea, but if there was one thing I would go with, I would say that rolling out open data and digitalization and making it a service that is available to every citizen of the world would be one of the biggest solutions we came up with in this era. Your Excellency, if I can bring it back to you, I mean, we, we talk about what you've done and the challenge you've had in the past 12 months. I mean, what would you say are the biggest systemic solutions that we, we, we've seen or that you've encountered or that you've told yes. about? Do we have reasons to, to be hopeful on that? Yes, of course. We always have reason to be hopeful, Manus. I can see three things where I say we have a big shift in a systematic mm -hmm. solutions. Let's look at e-commerce, for example. On a retail level, so many more people are now buying groceries online. Many people who weren't doing that before, but because of the lockdown, were forced to use these platforms are now using it on a daily basis. So this I see as a big shift. Also, when you look at um, uh, the evolution of global food supply chains, they were very static and inflexible. Mm -hmm. Now looking at blockchains, AI, uh, digitization, it's now becoming more flexible and these systems will become then more resilient, also produce uh, less food loss as well. This uh, shift I see as well. And also I see a faster adoption of technology. Every country is looking into how to grow more food more efficiently. So this is happening as well. Uh, all these cases are happening in the UAE, but I think globally, these are all the systematic shifts. Plus, as I mentioned before, the consumer behavior side. People now, a lot of people here in the UAE started to grow food at home, even on their balconies. So the whole idea of cooking more at home, uh, taking care of not to waste so much food, because at the end of the day, they're also looking at how much they're spending on food as well. So these are all the systematic changes that I feel have positively emerged from the crisis that we can really use to accelerate our, our steps towards the SDGs. Time is always a thief in my life, both on live television and here on the forum. Um, I'd like to thank you both. We've got less. We've got less than minutes. We're going to wrap up the conversation. I think the whole point of it is is to provoke thought, to challenge government, and to challenge people like me, normal regular people, how you shop, how you eat, and for people like us, to put pressure on ministers like you, and indeed uh, across you, Dr. Agnes, the special envoy. 
uh, to make our world a better place and to get to that SDG number two, which is, of course, eliminating hunger. My thanks to you both for joining the panel. Uh, Your Excellency, Mariam al Mahari and uh, Dr. Agnes Kalibata, Special Envoy to the U.S. Secretary General uh, for a great time at this week's summit. Thank you Thank for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Agnes. Thank you.